Welcome back. Got to start walking through the different systems here of the RV. Um, kind of give you an understanding of what those are about. Uh, uh, but we'll start with the different compartments and what we have stored in each of those. We'll start with this nice little one by the front door. This is your, oh crap, box. Uh, this is extra tolls, uh, duct tape. Uh, it's not really a life vest. It's a it's a glow in the dark vest. So if you're out by the highway, umbrellas, bee spray, extra oil, all those little things, extra flashlights, things you might need uh, when you're on a trip. If if for some reason you have a problem alongside the highway, so that's what that guy's purpose in life is. Matching little tiny guy. See, we got lots of doors here. This is all of your extra leveling jacks. If for some reason you are on a a crazy slope uh, there's boards there's these stacking I call them Lego Lego blocks uh, uh, that are nice and heavy duty there's big ones basically if you need to put those underneath the jacks to get extra level if you're on a an extra slope site uh, that's where those are there's also a small folding shovel in there not that I ever hope that anyone is in mud to the point where they need to shovel out but if there's something you need to get out of the way that's also there for you this next container, hopefully you will never have to open. This guy is where the uh, jack systems are, uh, which is that tank up here. So if for some reason it were to run low on fluids, that's where you would uh, 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 mess to put that in. Over here is your two batteries. They're actually on a slide out tray. So you can get to uh, the different pieces and parts of that guy as well. I'll rehook that up here after. Uh, down below is where the propane is filled. Again, you, it's on. You shouldn't have to mess with that um, unless there is a, uh, a problem or a, uh, we run out at your campground traveling. Uh, it is normally we try to keep it full when some folks leave and we like it full when it comes back. Uh, these are what are known as slam latches. So you hear me banging them pretty hard. Uh, that's actually fairly normal. So. Here is kind of a catch-all box, but the far left here, and you'll see uh, lots of different cables in there. There's extra extension cords. There's an extra 50 foot of cable for the RV. There's adapters to go different voltages and amperages uh, there as well. Down beside our black box here is a, a voltage box. If you're going to a campground where there is heavy duty or uh, 50 amp, uh, as far as your, your voltage for your site, which most of them are, you know, if you're reserving for a big rig. Uh, basically what you do is you plug this guy into the box at your site and you plug the RV into this guy. And the reason for that is that is an extra voltage protector and voltage uh, uh, regulator. So it makes sure that we don't have any strangeness with the voltage to protect the RV's electrical systems. Spare gas tank here back behind that poles with the ropes those are actually for uh, a giant clothesline that'll go across the back of the RV and I'll, I'll, mount, I'll note those mounts when we get there uh, kind of walking around but basically that's kind of your and some rags to wipe your hands off and those kind of things there the black box there is indeed uh, sewer pipes and sewer connectors and we purposely kept it black because well black tends to mean the poo tanks easier to see when we come from the far side. This actually goes all the way across. So it's a full giant open space. There's a table here. This is where our chairs will be stored. Uh, those kind of things. You won't ever have to go in here. Now, the generator's in here. You don't ever normally get into this unless there's some sort of predicament. We have had uh, some problems at times where if people run too many things at once, you know, both air conditioners and the microwave and I don't know, turn on the TV. Uh, and what it'll do is flip the breaker on the generator. So if the generator's running, but you get no electric on the inside, what that is, is, see if I can get it open here. There we go. You'll see that little breaker right there. That's the breakers that get flipped. Uh, and you just come out, you pull this little guy off. It just literally pulls off. You see, I did it with one hand. I'll hold the camera. Let's see if I can get it back on with one. Well, maybe, maybe not. There we go. That's it. And you just flip those breakers. So if you have a problem there. This is your black and your gray tank. 
Um, this is where you'll be hooking up the hoses to dump the tanks. Uh, you tie on the, the, the external hose right there. Right there. Yep, you kind of see it there. Tie it on the bottom. That is the gray valve. And that's the second gray valve. I know that's really weird. I'm not sure what they did. It had to do with the piping. But uh, if you're releasing the gray water, which is your sink, bathroom sink, kitchen sink, and your um, shower, that's the two valves that you would have to open. The right one there, the gray, and the gray. And then that one is the black tank. That's the uh, poo tank. Uh, and again, they're large tanks. So if they're full, it's going to be a lot of fluid in there. But basically, normally what you do is you will open or reach in. You have your hoses all hooked up. Those hoses will run down here into the ground somewhere. You open your black tank. Once that's completely empty, you push this back in. You open your gray, open your gray, let that empty. That'll also clean out your tubes, and then you're good to go. Next spot is our fuel. It is an 85 gallon fuel tank. So if you're completely empty, it's gonna make a long time to get that guy filled up. So. I try to not let it get under a quarter tank. Um, just a side note, the generator will turn itself off uh, if you hit a quarter tank or an eighth of a tank. So uh, it can't run empty if you're running the generator, just in case, uh, gives you a little peace of mind. This last one is probably the most important <laughs> as far as day-to-day -day operational stuff. Um, let's see if I can hold this open. now. It looks like an awful lot of stuff in here. It's really not as complex as it looks. You'll see there's instructions. Right now it's in dry camping mode. So dry camping, uh, you'll see up in the top left corner, down white, up green, up red, and right or to the left blue. If you want to fill the tank up with water, which I just did a few moments ago, then you do the white down, the green over, the red up, the blue down, right? So it just kind of lets you do that. The water hoses are in a basket in here and both the really the short blue one as well as the really long black one uh, they have these quick hookups and to hook up your water if you want to run water you go and it just clicks on and when you're done you pull it down and it just clicks off and that's it because we're in dry camping mode notice there's no hoses hooked up water's filled so what's nice about this is you have this outdoor sprayer or outdoor you want to call it outdoor shower whatever you want to call it um what's nice about this is maybe you spill a little gas so you hear that sound that's the pump pump going. did you see now i've got full-on spray water right uh hot and cold so uh it's nice and neat and tidy just grab this guy and turn him on hot water cold water thing to show you is what's known as the black tank flush in this compartment. Um, oh, uh, the black tank flush, I'll do that first. Now, one way to manage this, you can hook it up to, whoops, you can hook it up to campground water or whatever. Uh, what I like to do, because I've got water conveniently back here, I take this, this guy comes off, right? This guy goes on, whoops, this guy goes on. So now, I'm just running a loop from here to here. And if I turn this on, it's running into the black tank and cleaning that out. Now it's a one-way check valve. So when I unplug this, you'll see why I say that. Watch, water's gonna run out for a couple seconds. That is not poo tank water. That is just fresh water. That valve keeps anything bad from coming out there. And there's a couple extra adapters, hoses, hose connects, those kind of things in this box back here. To note, uh, this is our big giant ugly hose or uh, electrical cable, and it is a beast. Okay, it's it's very large, it's very heavy. All right, but it's what you do. You pull out, and what I found is easier. I'll take my box of hose out here for a moment, and you'll see here in the box right there's a cable. Down below is a a release or not a release a hole. So you run that hose out that hole, close it up, that keeps the bugs and the mice and those kind of guys out, and that's where your electric comes out. That's why you can shut the door when you're done. Similar on this side, there's a hole here for your water hose to come up. So you run those in, up in, do your water here, run up in, your electric hose goes out there, and from there you're able to close everything down. 
off the back i noted earlier about the clothesline you'll see this guy here and over here a similar one those two metal poles that were in our first box up there we looked at one goes on this side one goes on this side one goes on this side and they stick way up in the air with ropes that run back and forth and that's basically allows you to dry clothes and those kind of things all right I do have one of those folding super ladders, uh, heavy duty super ladders uh, strapped to the back ladder. If you need to get to the roof, you take this guy, this ladder off and use that ladder to climb up on the roof. But you never know what you might have to get up in the air to get to or step ladder for. So I like to have that just in case. You'll notice this nice little contraption on the back called BillsBumperQ.com. What that is, is a great little invention. Um, it's where the barbecue grill sits and it's always available to you and to get that over to a nice little cooking area go over to this guy let's see here there's a pin flip them up and that comes out and then my grill folds around walk right around here so it's now sitting on this side as well now that's important for two reasons. One, you'll notice down here on the side is there's our gas hookup. And up here, I'm gonna walk around behind it so you can kind of see it. Where that blue is, that's the other end of the hookup. And there is a hose that hooks from underneath, from that adapter, right up to the, ho to the gas grill. That hose is in our neat little storage box right here. You see that hose. Now what this is, this is my little cooking area. So when you're nice and level, this guy stays open. It's not a very deep um, storage unit, but it's got fire starters, my ax for cutting firewood, some mountain pie makers, some grill tools, those kind of things. Those are all in this box, so they're nice and convenient to the grill itself. Uh, but the hose then is right here. You take it, it's one of those quick connect hoses, and you plug it in there, and then here is the little thing you clip on, and you'll have gas running to your little uh, Weber grill. And to put this guy away, you just push. Obviously wait till it's cooled down. And then, hey, pin drops. And there we go, my grill's put back in place. This last container is kind of my campsite fun box. Uh, I do provide you a little table. There's a couple uh, scented bug candles in there. There's an extra uh, uh, outdoor rug, mat, whatever you want to call it, um, as well. Now, I normally also will put a propane fireplace and an extra tank of propane that doesn't run off the RV separate because some campsites don't let you burn actual fires and that'll let you have a little campfire if need be. It's really up to you when you leave. I just kind of provide that. You're going to hear this fun noise here. That is actually the hot water heater. I'm, I'm warming up the or I'm providing hot water in the hot water tank. So propane is now heating up that water. The uh, hot water tank as well runs off propane and or electric. So if you're at a hot or at a website with electric, just go ahead, a website, a campsite with electric, uh, just go ahead and hit the electric um, heater and it's got both uh, on there. So the gas will give you fast recovery uh, if you're taking a shower or whatever, whereas the electric kind of keeps it warm all the time. The box to the left is the furnace. You normally aren't gonna hear this kick on unless you're camping in cold weather at which point you're going to want yourself uh, 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 run the furnace inside to warm things up um, as well. So and up top is the vent for the fire or the fireplace, the refrigerator. So what you will hear in the there is if it's kicking over to like travel mode, so to speak, for the fridge, you'll hear tick, 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 tick. It's not a time bomb. It's the refrigerator flipping over to uh, uh, propane because it will run propane while you're on the road. Next compartment, this is outdoor games, uh, basins for washing dishes outdoor, uh, the big mat that goes outside. I'll throw extra chairs or tables in here if it's something that you guys request while camping. Uh, so it's just extra storage. The 
next one is our main big storage compartment. Uh, and again, this is the one from earlier that goes all the way across. Lots of chairs, tables, those kind of things. Um, right now there's extra rags in there. I might pull them out for this next trip. But uh, uh, this big white box hopefully is never needed, but it's very important to have. It's lots of tools, sealants, tapes, screws, bolts, anything that you might need uh, to repair while in route or at the site um, as well. The These guys right here, uh, these are a, a nice little gadget. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. So basically what you do is you put them underneath my steps here and you screw them until they go up against the bottom of the step and it just gives you a much more secured step um, coming in and out all day, every day if you're there for long term. Push button, push button. And not a big screen TV, but a good size TV. Uh, this gives you a couple things. First, it gives you outside outlets to work from. Second, it gives you a TV. You can bring out and swing here, there, and everywhere. And then also a radio um, with uh, USB hookups. There's a USB and an audio in, so if you want to jam with your, while you're at your uh, campsite, you can. Uh, there's a couple speakers out here as well. We do also have PA speakers if you really want to jam at your campsite, but that's really up to you. So. All right, so let's go to the awning and the outdoor steps and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, first and foremost, you notice the steps aren't out. When you open the door, steps are gonna come out for you. Those are automatically gonna close anytime the engine is started, or uh, if the button is pushed right inside here, there's a right inside the door, there's some panels with some uh, magic buttons. One of those is the power step button. You notice it's on, I just turned it off. Now what that's gonna do is while we're parked, notice the steps didn't go in, okay? If I leave that off, oops, I'll show you I did that again. It was there and I just flipped it. Now when I shut the door, the steps go in and out every time. If you're at a, if, if you're parked, just hit that switch so they're not opening and closing a billion times. The other one I'll note just for coming in and out, so I'll kind of show you the inside real quick, is interior lights. It's the farthest big fat switch right here. You'll notice I got all the lights on now. Uh, it's convenient when you're down here, not so much when you're up in the top. So is the awning. So you're gonna notice the awning, let's go up here. Awning from there over to there. And I'm gonna show you what it does. So when I push the awning out, I'm pushing down to go out. And you're not seeing what it's doing, but you're hearing. So I'm going to close it again. There we go. So now I'm going to do it out again, except this time I'm going to point up here. You see, it's just going to start running itself out. Uh, you might get some drips. It always likes to store the water inside. Whoop. And you just hold that down button until you see the little flaps come out. There we go. Exterior lights one and exterior lights two. Exterior lights one, on, off. You'll notice two things. One, it's the little night light steps. And also outdoors, it's the big porch light. Exterior lights two, which is this guy. If you look out at the awning, a nice little LED strip just to kind of give you some cool looking lights when you're out there. The other thing I will note uh, as we come up in here is that red switch right there. What the red switch is, the red switch kills all the main power in inside the RV. So somebody is going to accidentally hit that when they mean to turn on the lights. And what it does, you ready? You hear a thump too. Everything went off. I'll turn it back on. Just hit the button a second time. And you're going to hear everything turn back on. So uh, not a big deal, but it is the, the lighting system from there. A couple other things to note just on the door here. Okay. Inside, it's a, it's a double door. Okay. So you got a screen on one side. And then if you want, you get this little lever. That closes. 
And now you got yourself a screen door. If you like the air moving through the RV, just leave that door open. It doesn't bang or anything. The awning's not hitting the door, so you're good there. Okay, or you can put it in there and just open and close as normal. It does show you the weights. That's important to note. So I'll leave that there for a moment if you need to look at that. Uh, is right inside here. This is the door handle to open and close the door. And you'll see. All right, so that's how you open the door to open it. This is also, right here, is our deadbolt. So at night, if you want nobody breaking in on you, you just flip the deadbolt. Okay. The key I give you will lock this door and will lock this uh, as well. So if you want to do that, that's great. You'll see the two locks. Uh, it does open uh, and close pretty easily. You don't have to slam it. So, so I tell my girls, you'll see, that's that's it. If you want to go really quiet, you can lift the little handle of that. Uh, it's a pet peeve of Bob, so you can ignore that if you want. Okay, so we're at our campsite. We parked where we want to park. The engine's been turned off. I like to pull these out and put them up there because if for some strange reason you forget to do that, uh, there are certain things that will not work if the keys are ignition is on at all. Even if just a little tiny hair on, it, they just won't work. Um, along with the keys, just a night, a little note. We really only provide these two keys. This key is for the engine. This key is for your side door, both the, the latch as well as the deadbolt. We don't do all the locks for outside. There's three different kinds of locks for the, the storage units. Uh, our view tends to be if they really want in, I'd much rather them steal my lawn chair uh, uh, than to bust open those locks. Uh, it's cheaper to replace the lawn chair. So now we do want to lock the inside of the RV at times, which is why we provide those locks. So. We're now at our, our spot, right? Uh, we're, we're sitting here, everybody's happy. The first thing you do is you turn on the leveling system, push one button, okay? See it bl blinks at you. And then you say auto level. And it's gonna make beepy noises and some strange noises throughout the RV. And it takes a lot longer than what your expectation is. Uh, I say that because you're like, oh no, nothing's working and something's broke. It's not. It's just taking a while. Now, the reason I note all of those, uh, while that's beeping, actually, I hear it working outside. Give you a little. The other thing you're going to note is it's going to move the RV. The entire RV is getting leveled. So it'll lift this guy. It's leveling jacks. It's not, they're not, a, you know, bounce jacks or what do they call them? Um, supports they're not leveling supports these are actually leveling jacks if, if if you had to you can pick the entire back end front end side of the rv up in the air uh and go from there but it will kind of jostle you around a little bit here while we're waiting i just can hear the annoying beep and it is not fast i would love to tell you that it is perfectly auto leveled the first time um it's not that's why we walk through this process with folks Come on, here it comes. It's kind of hard. Oh, I don't know whether you caught that. But it's actually jostling the RV a little bit. Let's see if I can. Until you hear. done. Hoping the mic's picking that up. <laughs> okay. But the beep beep says, hey, we're good to go. All right. So then what I do, somewhere in the RV, if it's not, whoops, I'm going to turn this around. If it's not up here in this little storage unit, it'll be in either storage unit A or B. And that is just a very simple little cheapo level. And what I do is I put that guy right there on the floor. And you'll notice, I don't know if you can see that, 
See my bubble? My bubble was not level. So what I can do is I can go over, and what you're doing is you're telling the jacks what to do. So I want my left jacks to go down. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. So you see that? I'm pushing up. Now if I have my jacks go up, it lowers this side. So I wanna push the jacks down. And you'll see as I lift that, Ta-da, there my jack just went level. So that's left to right. And then I take the same process and I go back to front, but I don't have to do anything because look, I'm perfectly level right now, back to front. So if you can spin this guy around and it's pretty much level all the way, you're in good shape. So now once you've leveled that, now comes the slides, okay? The slides are done from towards the back of the RV, about halfway back, so we're gonna get up. We're gonna move back. So slide one, you'll notice kind of tight to walk through here. It's not impossible, but it is tight, all right? That's one, it's not jacks, uh, slides. That's slide number one, and then slide number two is the bed in the back. So let's start with slide number two, uh, just cause we're back in the back and you'll see this big panel and there's a gazillion buttons and it's overwhelming, but it's okay. Okay, so to kind of walk through this panel, you'll notice my little red lights on for pump. That means my water pump's on, and if I don't want that on, I can go, oop, turn it off from here. Okay, I'm gonna let it on so I have water. You'll see LPG, this is my gas, full. Battery, full. Fresh water, full. Black tank, empty. Gray tank, empty. It's exactly what we want to start a trip. This is the other place as well, I can start my generator, okay? So to start the generator, which is normally what I do after I get through the initial uh, maneuvering and those kind of things of the RV, because I want that extra juice to move the, the slides. So you come up here and you go start and you just press and hold that. I don't know if you can hear that, it's now started. But here's the part that's kind of, I don't know, annoying. It takes 10 seconds, 20 seconds for it to flip. So if we wait a moment and listen, on if you heard that funk that funk is it flipping over and letting me know that I now have generator power you'll see my microwave has the zeros or flashing zeros depending upon the status of the microwave my refrigerator will have a green light just telling me I'm on. Um, and so now I know I've got plenty of juice for the slides. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is first, I will have gotten outside the RV and made sure I have that five feet. Remember I told you it was a five foot slide. So the back one's very wide. Okay, and we're gonna go out. Now it's gonna sound awful. I'm just warning you. It tends to be a little disconcerting for first time users. But uh, so we've leveled, parked, took the keys out, we've leveled the RV, we're gonna go back and do a slide. So we're gonna do the rear and we're extend. There we go, extend the slide. So now I'm gonna do it again. Now we're gonna look, okay, so extend. I'm gonna push up, extend. It is not fast. And again, I've already looked outside, right? I now know that I've got more than enough space. If you've got a friend, have them stay outside as well. And you're gonna wanna run this till it sounds like it's tired. It's gonna run and run and go, wah, till you listen. And then let go. So you go until it sounds tired, then you let go, okay? Now we're gonna do the front slide as well. Now I will note, we have some extra stuff stored in this little cubby back here. So pull these guys out just to make sure nothing gets broken. And we're gonna go up to slide one, extract. And you'll watch this guy. Let's see if I can get a good. And you're gonna run it till it sounds tired. So, and then we can stand these guys back up. It's cleaning, it's cleaning stuff that everybody's gonna need. Oops, so cleaning stuff everybody's gonna need. It just kind of gets tucked in here. Okay. 
So now you'll note, if we go back all the way into the bedroom, we have lots more room to work with here as we walk through. You got your couch, your dinette, your two seats. Uh, one thing I will note on the two seats in the front, so now that we're kind of getting set up, is these also have a lever right underneath. If I pull this up, you'll see it, see that little lever. And if I slide that, you'll see my seats will turn. There's one on the far side, you have to reach down on that side of the seat, that also turn around. And what's nice about those is now you've got a couple extra seats to work with. There is bedding and pillows up top. There is bedding and pillows in here. Sometimes there's bedding and pillows in here, depending upon the trip. All of these drawers are empty for your, for your use. And before we put this, before we put this bed down, you'll look under here. Uh, spare silverware, spare cups, uh, paper towels, napkins, toilet paper, etc. So there's some extras in there as well. Okay. Now this is my own homegrown, home-built gadget uh, uh, for inside here, which is the bed. Uh, but I wanted a super nice, comfy king bed. Now remember I said almost a king in the in the thing. You'll notice this little cutout. Well, that little cutout is for the bathroom door. Um, so, uh, basically what you do here is you, we're going to see if I can do this with one hand. So push on this wooden part and there's a little ratchet strap and it just hooks on up here. So if I take this guy and I push until I can unhook, I'll just throw that guy off and now, ah, that helps. I can bring my bed down. So now my, my king bed is down. The bedding for the king bed is in here. I actually, we do two twin comforters in case it's not as friendly. Uh, and, and the sheets are there. This upside down table actually gets flipped and it goes, you'll see the hole between the two seats in the floor. It goes up and you just twist in and you have a little table between those two chairs in the front. Another note on this, up here is the strap for this double door. And it is a door that once you do it, you can close yourself off, get yourself some privacy back here. But of course, uh, the bathroom is back here as well. So, which is great or horrible, depending upon your needs. And please, 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 please remember to hook that otherwise, I happen to know from experience, these doors will bang when you go around a turn and fall off the tracks, which we don't want to do. Uh, here's the front bed up over the driver and passenger seat. Bedding and everything's up there ready to go. Uh, first the thing you have to note is the seats have to be straight forward. That's the only way that the, it works. So I turned this earlier, so we're gonna turn it back till it clicks. There you heard a click. So now in good shape. This key, which we tend to leave in here, it's turned, so that now is on, and you'll see an up and down. Now, two things you'll note. Seat belt, that's just a safety mechanism. Push that to what releases. Make sure that key is left and right, and then you do up down, and here comes down. Oops. And you'll see I goofed. This arm's up, I gotta bring it up. the arm down now I can go all the way down there we go a uh, little ladder beddings all up there uh, I showed that front uh, the front blind will come down with the button beside the driver's seat and these guys are simply pull once they go down pull and let go they go up okay so you see the couch Base of the couch is a folding couch. You grab a hold of this cushion and this cushion and you pull up. You'll see I got a little bit of leverage. Now I can go out and he folds right down in. If I would like, I can make it fold down into uh, a bed. It's kind of a short twin bed or short double bed, I should say. The under there is games and dice and an extra. There's a vacuum cleaner under there if you want to sweep uh, uh, and just extra stuff. Velcro command hooks, those kind of things. So. That's underneath the bed, or underneath the couch. Okay. 
And I will say this is by far the least comfortable spot to sleep. So get your little kids on there or your small adults. The table also folds down into a bed. Uh, before I put the table down, you'll see underneath the seats, they lift up. There's bedding for both this dinette as well as the couch. And basically you pull this seat off, you pull this seat off, and then you grab this bed and just lift and it actually will pivot right down in between the two seats. And then you put the cushions back down and you've got yourself a full double bed. Along with that, for entertainment purposes, you'll see off to the right here, there's a little up-down button. Let me get that. And that is, as my daughter calls it, the Magic TV. So inside here is a television, which does work while you're driving. It does work while you're off, off grid. It works with the generator, so it works on all of those. Uh, a couple things to note. You've got a a sound speaker or a bar speaker that's much louder than the TV because I like it loud and up in here is where all of our remotes and those kind of things are for the TV and uh, everything else now there is a Roku attached to this TV you'll kind of see it underneath there uh, you'll need to use your own hotspot we don't able, aren't able to provide that hotspot everywhere in the country so we just if you want to use your phone go for it this is the remotes as well as the all of the manuals and systems stuff for the RV itself. Uh, we've got uh, extra water mugs and drink cups and those kind of things up there as well as like fly strips and those kind of things. It happens, it's camping. And then cups, plates, and just storage containers up there. And just kind of continue back here. You will notice here, we've got outlets here. There's outlets there. There's actually outlets. I'll come back here in the kitchen. Here as well. That's the circle thing. Push down. And it's one of those outlet. That's hard to do with one hand. There we go. Outlets and USB chargers there. And then finally outlets over here on the end. As well as, I call it my coffee maker. I just pull up and it'll click into place. And then underneath, there's a place to grab each side. When you're ready to put it down, it goes back down. Obviously garbage can, plates, cups, uh, salt, pepper, mugs, those kind of things. Microwave, full-size microwave. This is actually a drying rack, which just slides out and sits right here on the counter and runs into the sink. It fits pretty nice and neat up there. Cutting boards, um, stove top. Most people haven't used this, but I will show you and it just kind of rolls back. And it's like any other gas appliance. I'll turn the little pretty lights on. Ooh, oh, oh. We'll turn the front on, you push in. That'll load the gas and then you turn this guy. Ta-da, we'll do the back one. Do the third one. Whoops. One, two, three, and then push in to off. And then the oven works exactly the same way. You just turn it on here, click, and you'll see it fire up in there. And if you want lights for in the oven, put that back. We normally have bags. I'm going to try to refill that for the next trip. And mop. Uh, uh, Swiffer mop uh, and broom for stuff. We went over the systems here. Again, generator, slides. Uh, we don't need to worry about tank heaters. Uh, tank heaters are actual battery powered electric mats on the tanks to keep them from freezing. The water pump, which is on, if it's not the little red light right here. If you don't have that, turn it on. Here's gas, which will run just off battery. And then the electric will also run uh, uh, for the water heater. That's uh, hot water. But the electric is only for if you're on shore power, as we are right now. Snack area, uh, drawers, containers. We actually have a couple extra snacks, extra stuff up there. Most of that is all empty, so you have places to store your stuff. Fridge and freezer. It's not gigantic, but it is pretty good sized. 
especially for a long weekend or even a short week. And then of course the freezer, so a good bit of ice, a couple of bags of ice in there. Here we do provide you a good bit of miscellaneous stuff. Paper towels, we do have a Keurig in there with a hodgepodge of different types of uh, uh, teas and coffees and uh, here's your creamer and sweetener and those kind of things. And just some miscellaneous things. There's sugar packs down there, Tabasco, tomato sauce, pepper, you know, just things you might want when you're camping. Oh, aluminum foil up top. Down below is mostly dog stuff and cleaning stuff. So you can ignore most of that unless you have a dog or you want to clean things up. Storage. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention earlier. Whoops, some of those fell off. Now, this cushion goes to the middle spot for this when it's down as a bed. So that's what the purpose of that guy is. Okay. Um, but it's just storage for luggage, gear, those kind of things. And then extra toilet paper, tissues, suction cup hookies for in there, some spare towels and washcloths, some more towel, beach towels and uh, washcloths and things like that for if you're going swimming or having some fun. Pots, pans, drinks, knives, all that kind of fun stuff that you need when you're cooking at camp. Water, as long as this red dot is on, you will have water running. So down is hot, up is cold, and then, you know, mix however. This does pull out if you need to rinse stuff off, those kind of things. I go into the bathroom here. Open that guy up. That said, let's go into the bathroom. Uh, you have a, a toilet here, sink. Note the plug, everybody misses the plug under there for hair dryers, those kind of things, and shower. So it is a 36 by 36 shower, so it's reasonable uh, uh, to, to do. If the pump's on, uh, we've had this multiple times, but if the pump's on, uh, if the pump is on, then this will work, okay? Uh, meaning if you hit it on your way to a football game and let it run the whole way to the football game and then you get set up you're going to be out of water so you just need to be cautious of that uh, if the pump is running to close the door this guy flips up and you got yourself pretty well locked in please lock it otherwise it goes bang 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 some general meds those kind of things up here uh, but your medicine cabinet uh, there's extra TP and uh, cleaning supplies and that kind of thing under the sink and again cold water hot water toilet something that anybody who's never been in an rv uh, uh will not know so this is a foot press if you look down to the right there's a little pedal there so i'm going to go with my foot if i push this down part way you'll see it fill in if i go all the way it's just a big hole okay so part way water fills all the way it flushes i also am fancy pants so because of that um i'm joking of course uh because of that uh, i also have a bidet so a bidet so this is rear if you turn this way it, it's your rear if you turn this way it's your front that's for ladies not for us guys and basically if you turn it you'll see if i go any further i'm going to get wet so i'm not going to do that uh, but that's like rinses off the nozzle and then if you go further it sprays your bum i love my bidets there's also a max air fan in here that only works if the fan is turned on. Notice this button is up. Okay, and then if you hit on. So that right now is pulling air out. If you wanna do that, if I hit this button right here on the remote or this button up here, It'll stop and it'll pull air in. Now what is, it'll pull air in, there we go. Oh, that feels really good. Uh, one thing to note on this, <laughs> uh, very cautiously, if you have it sucking air out with the fan open because you're embarrassed because you, you know, did a number two, uh, and that fan's running on full blast and you flush that toilet, it will suck all that horrible smell out of the toilet uh, tanks up into the bathroom and you really don't want to be dealing with that because it's just awful uh so my suggestion is right before you flush hit the power button it'll shut it down it'll stop the suction 
and then you come down to the bottom, you use a little foot, and you go, and you flush. Put a little bit in there, because basically you want that seal in the toilet to be have water on it. That keeps any smells from coming up. And then when you leave, I just leave the bathroom light, or the bathroom fan on all the time, and then the bath light. Okay. Whew. HVAC systems. We're down to our last things, folks. There are not. There's one here, air conditioner, and there's one up front, second air conditioner. So there's two air conditioners in this RV. And the purpose of that uh, is to uh, a move the sound. Uh, a little bit and B if it's really hot you can run both of them on the generator we will run both so what I'm gonna do uh, I'll just note on this because it gets loud when they're on so this is what they're called an air dump valve so this will push all of the air conditioning right out these giant holes okay if you close them it forces them out the vents and both air conditioners are actually attached to all the vents so if you run this one on high you'll get good bit of air out of all the little vents if you run both on high, it's gonna really shove them out the vents. Whoops, close that. And if you turn the back one on, you'll get a good set of air. So the back one is a 13,000 BTU air conditioner and the front one is a 15,000, so it's a little bigger. So what we're gonna do is let's turn on our front air conditioner. It's much like your heating systems at home. Okay, let's see if I can get a good focus on there. There we go. One button is off, fan. Fan high, cool high, cool low, cool auto, it'll turn it on and off, cool high auto, heat electric, that's heater in the air conditioner, heat gas, that's the furnace I mentioned earlier, and then back to off. So what we're going to do, most people end up wanting heat or air, uh, most of the time I want air. So I'm going to push the button until I see cool high, and you'll hear it kick on maybe not too loud and then i'm going to kick this guy down to 67. so the front one's running and you'll hear it i'm going to bring it up here the okay. we'll turn on the back one and we'll get them both running and it guess what works exactly the same way so cool high 67 we wait I've got both air conditioners running. Now, you cannot run these on low electric. You can run them in a campground, or you can run them like if you're plugged into the big main cable, or you can also run the air conditioning units uh, with the generator running. Uh, but as I noted at the generator way back when, it, if you run all of them at the generator, uh, and the mic both of them on the generator and the microwave and something else, it, it may pop the breaker on the generator, which kind of is annoying. I'm going to then turn that off and you'll see I'm just going to keep hitting this button until it says off. There, I turned off the back one. All right, well, it's sad. It's time to go home. So first couple things to do, let's come over here. We're going to turn off our main air conditioning units. I already turned off the back, so we're just turning the front off and get quiet. Oh. Let's get the front bed up. So to do that, again, the switch needs to be side to side. You need to make sure that uh, it is, is about as tall as that pillow. Uh, that's about all the taller you want stuff stacked up here, if you have anything stacked, just so it doesn't dig into the ceiling. And when you're done, you just go upsy daisy and it'll make horrible squeaking sounds. Watch the uh, magic little clicker, it'll stop right about where it needs to. Then this must be, or the engine won't start, <laughs> must be connected. Uh, side note, uh, both up and down, we've had a couple bumps twice in two years where this guy just acts like it doesn't, it's not connected. Uh, something's in these connectors just a little bit here or in here, you'll see some other connectors. Just wiggle those guys around a little bit. Uh, that's enough to, to manage that. So this bed's up, step one done, okay? Step two is let's get this back bed ready to go. Um, I'm gonna see if I can do this with one hand while doing a camera. 
And this is a pain in the butt, I'm not gonna lie, but I build everything super heavy duty. So I grab my bungee from one side, let it drape down below the bed. Okay, I reach under and grab that. First I pull up on the mattress, then I pull up on the wood, then I, uh, oh, I'm sideways, sorry about that folks. Then there's little grooves, whoops. There we go. There's little grooves, I don't know if you can see those, in the wood, and you just want this strap in the grooves. One, two, and lean it until you can hook it. Almost fell over. <laughs> and ta-da, my main bed's open, or closed. Now, I'm ready to close. And this is a good spot just because you have extra room. Make sure these doors are all the way back, and this guy is, the bungee is attached. Otherwise, that door flies open. I know it from personal experience. Uh, it's also a little easier to turn the lights out here. And now it's ready to bring it in. Now, be very cautious if you put anything in front of the bed or behind it. It will, these things are very powerful. They will crush computers. They will crush chairs and tables and coolers. That's actually what happened to the door here. So we now come over. Slide two is the back one. So we're gonna do it first and retract. And it makes horrible sounds. And you want to make this guy go until you hear it slow down and go wah. So I'm going to go in here close to the mirrors here. I've got the motors. I'm holding the button. Still holding the button. Still holding the button. Still. Now I'm letting go of the button. I held it that long. That makes sure those rubber seals on the on the back of the slide have sealed up completely. Now, my garbage can, I've got my nifty little bungee. So bring him over. Here we go. Tough to do one. Wrap it around and hook it on the drawer. So now my garbage can is set. I grab these guys here and I just like to lean them towards me just so nothing can get busted up. Right, so I'm just leaning all these cleaning supplies and then we're gonna come up let's see, get them out of the way so we're gonna go up here and I'm just gonna go to slide one and retract and again it's a little harder to hear hold hold and then let go and now I can work to tuck these guys back in so that they're not gonna cause me problems Boom. There we go. Oh, and for some reason, that's the carbon monoxide detector down at the bottom there. Just to let you know if it's beeping at you, uh, that's where it's at. It's not a magic thing. Okay, so we got bed down, or sorry, bed up. Slide in, slide in. One more check. Is my shower door hooked? Yes, it is. Okay. Be able to come up. What do we got left? Levels. So we're gonna come over to our levels. Power. Whoops, I was already on, sorry. Power on. And it's really easy. All retract. And you wait for a couple minutes. And one thing that I like to do while those are going is just to triple check everything outside. So we'll come back around. Again, remember this is the little latch for the door. Oh, glad I checked. My awning, awning's still out. And the awning is simply, you come in here, you see in and out. We're gonna push in and hold it. If we look up, it's just slowly closing itself off. And if you listen for our beeps, That now means our jacks are all up and we're ready to roll there. And then when it gets tired, I'm gonna do that one more time. So this is almost closed and you'll hear a little bit of squeaking up here. That's where you want it to go. That's make sure it's nice and taut, right? against. you don't wanna ratchet or crank it there, but you wanna make sure it's, it's reasonably tight. And then I do one more walk around. 
I tend to go like this. I throw my hip into it. Bonk. Bonk, just to make sure all those doors are shut. The grill is indeed latched. My puppy's coming to say hello. Now, I'm gonna leave it plugged in, but normally you would pull all these cables back up in. Put your hoses all back up in. Do the butt, Don't. hip guy there. Make sure all your hoses are detached. Everything looks like it's in good shape. And now, turn the generator off. That would be one of the things I would do. So we'll do that up front. We're ready to go now. Now this step will automatically turn in, pull itself in the moment you turn on the ignition. Okay, now I'm gonna purposefully do that so you can kind of see it. I guess you can't see it because we'll be inside. Trust me, it does. Okay, everything's good to go. The jacks are all up, you can see, and the lights are on. Generator will turn off, you can hear it. Let's see, I'm gonna hit this button, but you can hear it out here. Generator's off. Key, and we're ready to rock and roll. Thanks everybody.